I'm Jeff Nimnick. And I'm Rick Paulette. And we're the hosts of The Last Stand. Coyote hunting is my passion. And coyote calls are my livelihood. And together we aim to bring you the best predator hunting tips, tricks, and tactics right down to The Last Stand. The Last Stand, presented by Lucky Duck Predator Calls. We are the masters of deception. Swagger bipods. Shoot with confidence. Shoot with swagger. On X Hunt. Know where you stand. Hornady. Accurate. Deadly. Dependable. Well, I'm excited to be back. Season four of The Last Stand. We're here in Idaho. Um, we have about three days to hunt, so we're gonna try to get two episodes out of this hunt. Um, you never know, it's mid-October. Sometimes, you know, early season coyote hunting can be really good. Other times you're dealing with, with the nice weather, you know, unmotivated coyotes. So uh, I'm meeting up with my, my good buddy, Rusty Gamble and Craig Sandy uh, for day one. And uh, they got a good plan laid out and hopefully we can uh, we can get on some coyotes and uh, put some action in front of you guys. You know, Rusty and Craig are great guys. They're part of the Lucky Duck team. Um, that's probably how I know them the best. You know, they kill tons and tons of coyotes up in this country, um, and it's fun. I get to compete against them in contests. When I come out here and hunt the, the world championships and other contests over the years, I've got to compete against them. So um, it's fun. We've developed some, some great friendships out of the deal. Um, and this is really the first time I've ever got to hunt with them, so excited for the opportunity. southeastern Idaho. It's great to be back season four of The Last Stand. Um, it's mid-October. I'm here with Craig Sandy. Rusty Gamble's over here getting a shotgun ready. But we actually made a stand already. Didn't kill anything. Rusty's guaranteeing though that this is a stand I think. He said we can't go two stands without killing one so it's looking good. We're gonna slip in here. We got some ag still in. It's early enough in the fall that the agriculture's still in. We got pasture country. We're gonna be calling into both, you know, you just don't know, you know, this time of year where the coyotes are gonna be, so I'm gonna give it a shot. with some mixed sagebrush. You got another alfalfa field over there, less than a mile. Just a great place to catch these coyotes move right now. I'm gonna start off with some TNT cottontail. I'm gonna open it up like a big, big, wide open stand. It's early in the morning. I'm hoping these coyotes are gonna come from a long ways if they hear it, so I'm gonna open it up. Let that play for four or five minutes and then we'll get into some more aggressive pup distress and coyote fights. So the first coyote of the day, we get, down, we get down off this slope, we have some ag off to our right. As we get down into the stand, sometimes as you're walking into stands, you really don't know exactly what it's gonna look like when you get down in there. And, and when, once, once we walk down in there, we realized the, the grass was just a little taller than we were expecting, but we thought we had a pretty good vantage point. But lo and behold, the coyote comes from hard right and we just barely catch the, the set of ears bouncing by the call. Um, Rusty is sitting down with a shotgun and he doesn't even see, see the coyote. It's well within shotgun range, but at that time the coyote turns and wheels out of there. Um, I get a few running shots off at him as he's bouncing through there. 
and old Craig had to show me up and uh, really probably about the last opportunity we got before that coyote crest that hill, Craig rolled him up and uh, we had our first coyote of the day. Nice shot. So we're moving along, we're making some just crazy good looking stands, um, you know, on the edge of this ag, we're looking for cover, you know, the coyotes will leave that ag and they'll head out into this grass and into the sagebrush and we work our way up this big hill and once again, it's a big gradually sloping hill so it's, it's tough to, to get in there where you have a little bit of visibility, especially when you have cameras. Um, we elect to get down right on this little wash and the wind's not ideal, but we feel we can make it work, you know, using the e-call, getting it out away from us, and hopefully funnel coyotes up this draw. And about six minutes into the stand, we look off to our right and I catch this coyote coming up the draw. And he was really close to our wind, but luckily, you know, the, the terrain, I think, held him out away from our wind. And uh, he kind of saw us at the last second we saw him. And, and at the time, he was only about 60 yards, maybe 50 yards, and, and Rusty jumped up. and as I'm swinging over to the rifle and, and Rusty gets a shot off and he disappears and he comes up running up on the far hill and I was just kind of getting a beat on him uh, and, and Rusty touched off the shotgun and rolled him at 91 yards. I was waiting for him to come rolling up out of there. I was going to shoot him running up there and get me to do it. So a lot of times when you're coyote hunting, you may bump coyotes and, you know, ultimately you don't want to because when you're, especially when you're walking into stands, um, you're hoping that coyote's over the next little hill or bedded up where he doesn't see you. So when you start to call, he comes in, but every now and then you bump him. And, and that was the case. A lot of times, you know, as I'm going in, you'll be paying attention and this coyote was laid up right kind of where we thought hopefully a coyote would be, but just in a little too close, but he saw us and jumped up and took off running. And he was only about 150 yards. and I figured we had some time so I dropped down through the swaggers and uh, you know luckily for me the coyote actually stopped just before he crested the hill and looked back and gave me about a 175 yard shot and uh, you know we're on, we're on a roll that was our third coyote of the morning. still maybe 15 20 thicker sage just a little more cover for these coyotes to be laid up in right now wind's kind of blowing right into her face maybe a little off to the right i got rusty tucked in down by the call but there's a there's a natural saddle over to our right so if any coyote comes from that that right half of the stand i think they'll funnel that down that saddle right in front of him to the call and he'll have a good shotgun shot craig's kind of set up over this big flat on the left and i'm going to be able to cover the right here in case something checks up out of shotgun range with rusty Lucky Pecker's been the trick so far. I'm gonna start off with, with some of that. So anytime, you know, the first part of the morning, you get three coyotes in a row, you're feeling pretty good. And uh, we felt like we had a plan. We felt like we had these coyotes kind of dialed in where they were at. Um, once again, Rusty puts us on a great looking stand. We get in there, it's a little thicker sage than what we have been in, but uh, it's not just a few minutes in and, and I catch movement of the coyote coming through the sagebrush and I'm able to, get my gun moved just slightly and the coyote pops up and a lot of times when you're hunting like we are with multiple guys with a rifle and a guy with a shotgun usually the shotgun guy is for the coyotes that come in and don't want to stop um, and if the coyote checks up at all we usually end up shooting that coyote with the rifle just so that coyote doesn't have a chance to kind of 
end up seeing something and turn around and leave. Nice. Another good nice. one. Yeah, he's got some good, yeah. good hair on her. A big old Another male. male. Yeah, he's a good sized male. We're gonna weigh this guy out. We're having a contest, see how big he is. Rusty, what are you saying? 37 or Craig? 36, I'm going with 34. Oh, winner, winner. No, no, oh, he's getting heavier. Oh, what did I say? I said 34, six. 34, 11. So a lot of times, if I have a decent idea of where I think the coyotes are going to come from, I'll move the call off to the side one way or the other, depending on where I think that is. And, and the reason why we do that is if you picture yourself as a coyote coming into the sound, and then all of a sudden you have four or five hunters set up right on the other side of where the sound's coming from, it's just that much easier for the coyote to spot you. But if it's off to the side here, and the coyote's looking at the sound and focusing on the sound here and you're off to the side, there's a lot better chance that coyote gets tunnel vision and it kind of focuses in on the sound of the call, maybe sees the decoy and it comes right in. And, and that was the case. Um, we had got right in on this coyote. This coyote couldn't have been more than 250 yards from us, laid up in the sage, middle part of the day. And uh, I went right with some lucky pecker and instantly that coyote you know, showed up and uh, same, just like we like, he kind of honed into the call and the decoy, lowered his head and Rusty timed it perfect, and uh, he maybe could have let him come a step closer and rolled him into the call, but that's the only super revolt we have, so I didn't want him shooting that either. Well, I appreciate you not shooting the only super revolt in the whole country right now. Right? <laughs> I was like, where's the call? I'm gonna shoot it as close to that call as I possibly can. Oh, man. That thing had its, you know when they have their head down like that, yep. they're going all the way, yep. all the way, man. That thing was wanting to eat it. Yeah, when they put their head down like that, they're done. it's over, man. It's just a matter of getting her timed out just right. You know, after uh, we shotgunned that coyote right at the call, we went on a dry streak at the end of the day, and that's part of coyote hunting. It seems like you, you get on streaks four in a row, then you might go eight in a row dry stands, and that's just the way coyote hunting is. Um, you know, you just keep grinding them out. All the stands were, were beautiful, just uh, the coyotes weren't cooperating, but sometimes that's just the way it is. You know, the great thing about this being a YouTube series is you guys can leave comments, ask questions. Um, myself and Rick get on there from time to time and, and hopefully we can answer your questions. Hopefully you guys are picking up lots of tips and tactics throughout this filming series. Um, if you're looking for more information, um, I'm actually starting a podcast called Eastman's Predator Pros. You can find it on Spotify, iTunes, Google Play. Um, check that out. You know, we'll, we're gonna go into a lot more in-depth talking on this particular hunt, on other hunts we're doing throughout the season. Um, and just lots and lots of, of coyote hunting tips and tactics. So, so if you're into the podcast uh, and you want to listen to one on coyote hunting, check out the Eastman's Predator Pros podcast. <laughs>